I'm Martin Smith and this is your Maxiforex Week in Review. Let's begin today with the week's risers and fallers. The euro dollar pair headed positively for the third consecutive week. It finished up with a positive 1.75% rise. Last trading was at 136.13. The British pound also closed on a positive note last week against the greenback, making a rise of just under 0.9% to close at 1,600. I can't see it now. Go back. No, it's all right. It's okay. It was just a weird figure, that's all. Go at the beginning again. Hello, I'm Martin Smith, and this is your UFX Bank Week in Review. Let's begin today with the week's risers and fallers. The euro dollar pair headed positively for the third consecutive week, finishing up with a positive 1.75% rise, with last trading at 136.13. The British pound also closed on a positive note against the greenback, making a rise of just under 0.9% to close at 160.03. The US dollar had a bad week versus the Japanese yen. It ended with a down 0.27%, with the pair last trading at 82.57. The CAD had a mixed week also against the greenback. The pair rose 0.7% to close at 0.9952 for the last trading. The Australian dollar had a decent week against the US dollar until Thursday trading when the pair dropped 1.4%. Earlier gains kept the pair virtually unchanged and it was last seen trading at 0.9897 this week. Oil sank 3.2%, losing 2.4% on Thursday trading alone. March crude orders last traded at 89.11. Gold fell 1.4% in a mixed trading week. And by the end of Friday trading, this precious metal was at $1,342 an ounce. In news this week, policymaker Adam Posen of the Bank of England expressed his concerns over a downside risk to the UK housing market. He said that this is due to the lack of credit for first-time buyers and very low levels of home sales. The housing market in the UK rebounded last year from its worst crash since the early 90s. The scarcity of supply and the lowest interest rates on record have boosted prices in the housing market. The current data reflects a mixed picture as the government is implementing the, lar the largest budget squeeze since World War II. The Bank of England's data shows that the mortgage approvals dropped to the most lowest levels that they've been since 2009, and the British banks also expect the rate of lending to be broadly flat during this year. Two main things have actually supported the UK housing market in recent years. First is the decline in interest rates and quantitative easing, which directly affected mortgages, making them more affordable. Second, the level of UK home building was reasonably lower for the size of the economy when compared to that of Spain, Ireland or the US. Posen suggests that the reasons for why the housing value has been somewhat resilient is that there exists both a demand factor through aggressive monetary ease and a supply factor in the oversupply being much less. In the UK, jobless claims declined to 4.1 thousand during December after a decrease of 3.2 thousand in the previous month. However, the ILO unemployment rate and the claimant count did not change and was the same at 7.9 and 4.5 percent respectively. Uh, of the main points to note is that the pound yen had fallen below its rising channel, which actually remained integral for about two weeks. If this price action can be held below 132, then the additional losses would not rule out as technical indicators started to draw a bearish picture. Moving into Europe now, at a meeting on the January the 17th, the finance ministers of the Eurozone pledged to fortify the region's safety net for countries that are strapped in debt. Speculation that leaders may improve the lending capacity of the European Financial Stability Facility has also improved, and this is actually being supported by 440 billion euros, that's equal to 598 billion dollars, in a guarantee from Eurozone governments. This would also expand the facility's role for allowing debt purchases. The Business Climate Index of the IFO Institute, which is based on a survey conducted on 7,000 German executives, was 110.3 in January, right, increasing from 109.9 median of 41 forecasts by the Bloomberg News Survey. This is the highest level since records for a unified Germany began starting in 1991. However, the Bank of Canada reported a modest economic recovery for the nation's economy last week, which was hampered by a strong currency that limits exports. The bank's forecast expects that the Canadian dollar will trade at parity with the U.S. dollar through the end of 2012. Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of Canada, said on January 19th that the reason for a weakening dollar is partly because of the country's deteriorating trade performance and low productivity gains. 
while China's economic growth hiked to an annual rate of 9.8% in the fourth quarter. In the previous quarter, it was marked at 9.6%. China has already moved towards tighter monetary policy, raising interest rates twice in the last four months. Last week, the central bank raised the amount of money uh, banks must keep in reserve for the seventh time in a year. Nomura Holdings Inc. forecast this week that the People's Bank of China will increase the key one-year lending rate to 6.81% from 5.81% this year and let the yuan strengthen about 6% against the dollar. Well, that's it for this week and be sure to visit us at maxiforex.ru.